Welcome to Happy Talks with Dr. Alice and Donovan. Dr. Alice Fong is a holistic naturopathic doctor and founder of Amour de Soi Wellness. And Donovan Jensen is a software engineer and founder of HowToHappy.com. Together, they're out to cause more happiness in the world. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Happy Talks. My name is Dr. Alice, and this is my awesome co-host, Donovan Today, we are talking about jealousy. Jealousy, yes. <laughs> we might have all been there to some extent, maybe more so than others. Uh, but yeah, Donovan, do you want to kick us off and share your initial thoughts with jealousy? Yeah, so the first thing that comes to mind for me is basically that I can't think of any circumstances where jealousy has been a useful tool for me. Mm. But I don't know that that's going to necessarily be the case as we unpack it, right? Because we've talked about this before, but emotions tend to serve some sort of purpose, right? So I think that's probably something worth exploring is just sort of, I don't know if you have something off the top of your head or if you want to talk about something else, but what it is, what place jealousy sort of holds. Because off the top of my head, I, I'm, I'm struggling to come up with the useful function that it serves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. When I initially think of jealousy, I I don't consider myself a very jealous person, I'd say, because it's like, especially, I don't think I would want to purposely make my partner jealous. Um, That doesn't seem healthy or productive for the relationship. Although, you know, there's a different, like if I were to go out and talk to some guys, not in a romantic sense, but just in a friendly sense, I think that there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not trying to make my partner jealous, but if he got jealous, I think that would be kind of like, why are you jealous? I have guy friends, you have girlfriends. (laughs) I'm, you should have trust in me. I think is like the hidden layer of jealousy. If like that surfaces when trust isn't there, that was kind of my initial thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I definitely think I want to hone in on the piece that you said, like trying to make someone jealous, right? Right. I think that for sure. Like, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know where that serves a like a useful purpose at all, right? I think sometimes right. people believe that they can take certain actions like that to cause jealousy, and that will cause someone to recognize, like, maybe your value or something like that, and act in a completely different way, but. Right. Every instance I've seen, it does not work out that way, right? If you um, are able to find someone's like point of jealousy and stoke that flame, mm-hmm. uh, the outcome you're likely to get is not one of like, oh, I'm, I care about you so much and I'm going to take extra good care of you now and I'm going to pay really close attention. More often than not, um, what I've seen it tied to is sort of these like really negative reactions and, and behaviors that you don't want mm-hmm. um, out of a partner or anything like that. So... I guess that does sort of allow me to circle back a little bit on what I think the use of jealousy is, right? And, um, you know, especially historically, there have probably been a number of instances where resources are limited, right? And uh, I feel like when I've experienced jealousy, it incites me to act in some way to try to get some sort of thing, right? right? It's it's sort of like anger, but in, in, instead of anger anger doesn't seem to be quite so directed at things like jealousy seems to be really directed around um, things or I guess people, but people as things sort of, right. Cause it's like, I don't want you to take my partner. I don't want you to take my whatever, or uh, I see you with like my partner and, and whatever else. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, I think that helped me open up a little bit. Like it, it's probably yet less useful than it used to be. Right. But I think to some degree, it does incite sort of action. However, pretty much everything I've seen is like not the type of action or behavior that you want because it's so easy to get overwhelmed and act in ways that are detrimental. Mm -hmm. Right. I think, I think I want to kind of take this from like two different vantage points. And I think, like, for example, like, if I were jealous of my partner, like talking to a girl, it, it kind of depends on the capacity. Like, I feel like if I were to get jealous when I, and I maybe like suspect that he's flirting and he's trying to like hook up with her, then yeah, maybe I would get jealous. But then I realized that it comes from like a place of insecurity of myself or my relationship. And it's really, that's underneath it all 
versus like if my partner was to actively try to make me jealous, that's like a, which I don't think he would ever do. Uh, that would be like a different story. So it's just like, hmm, is it like if you are jealous, is it because I'm insecure or is it because they're purposely trying to make me jealous? Which either way doesn't sound that helpful in either scenario, but it's kind of like a place to look at where what's happening here. And for me, if if someone was purposely trying to make me jealous because I've grown and developed enough uh, in my own self-awareness and my self-confidence to be like, if I had a real sense that they were trying to do that, then I would have enough confidence to walk away from the relationship because that's not someone I want to be with is someone who's purposely intentionally trying to make me jealous. And my, my husband is the he is a very friendly, friendly guy. He'll talk to anyone and everyone, like people at the checkout counters, way more so than me. He's just a very extroverted person. And I don't think much of it. Although I did a funny kind of like um, incidents. My brother just got married uh, or he had his wedding uh, last week on Friday. And I was like, I told my husband, you know, I, he, he doesn't always like to wear his wedding ring because he doesn't like jewelry. And I was like, we should wear our rings to represent our, our coupleness. And I, I just joked. I was like, yeah, so, so girls know that you're taken <laughs> kind of a thing. And he was like, oh, kind of like jokingly back, like, oh, do you think they would? Or, or oh, that, that sounds like jealousy to me. And I was like, no, I, I mean, even if you talk to girls, I would be probably fine with it because I have the trust in the relationship. But in that sense, if he, if I was jealous, he said that, um, that it would be flattery (laughs) to him. So I don't know where I'm going with this, but just kind of some, some pulling at the threads of jealousy in my own relationship. Yeah. So circling back to some of the things that you talked about, like, I think for sure, if, if you're in this sort of relationship where you see someone who is intentionally trying to create jealousy, that's just it's just such an immature and and weak position to be doing things from right it's Mm -hmm. it's the sort of behavior that you get out of people who have done no self-development or have no ability to sort of like tune into emotions or read situations or understand what's going on so that would run from that as a giant red flag Mm -hmm. um but going back to what you said around sort of jealousy forming towards um you know things that your partner is doing or whatever else I do think it's important if it's something that you experience regularly to sort of Mm. gauge or try to like step out of and and get a, the most realistic perspective that you can. Right. Mm -hmm. Because in some situations it is sort of a red flag. Like I think we've talked about it before. I have been in relationships that I've been cheated on before and uh, my jealousy meter was way miscalibrated on the low side. Or there were things that I was just like, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, sure. That's fine. Whatever. Like this seems fine. And then it wasn't. And then obviously (laughs) that history miscalibrated me on the other side. So then I was in other relationships where it was like, this isn't like, this can't happen. This isn't good. I don't want this. Like, this isn't fair. This is a red flag. So for me personally, it took a lot of time and sort of reflection and stepping out and honestly talking to uninterested third parties or, or like semi-interested, right? Not like my close friends are going to be on my side no matter what, but people yeah. who who sort of know the situation or whatever else to be able to sort of calibrate things. And everybody has their own um, sort of limits, right? Their own sort of boundaries that they want to set or what they feel comfortable with or don't or whatnot. But it took me a long time Um, having that history to sort of parse out where my boundaries were and what I felt comfortable with. And it goes back to what you're saying, you know, sort of this, this trust level, right. And so at times my trust level is extremely low uh, and at times it was much higher, but the other piece is um, if you have any sort of like grasp on the person's intentions, right. Like you were saying, like, if it's intentional, if if someone's intentionally trying to make you jealous and that's just full pumps down, yeah. But, um, you know, like talking to someone at the, at the grocery store, just talking to people, right. And yeah. it not having any sort of, uh, undercurrent or any sort of intention behind it. Like, those are the sorts of things that for me, at least I used to get jealous anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are still times that, that 
feeling sort of bubbles up in places that is not really appropriate, but only by doing all this work around sort of, okay, what am I comfortable with? What am I not? What seems sketchy to me? What doesn't? Have I been able to sort of set that in a way that's more based on what I want and what I think, as opposed to just the feelings that pop up as they pop up? Yeah, that's a really good point. I like your your reference to the like barometer sense in that it, it has shifted and changed based on your your relationship history. I can relate to that in that, you know, my very first love was I I had similar to you a very low, low like jealousy. I was like, Yeah, your your friend that's a girl needs a place to crash. And so you're letting her stay at your place, no worries. <laughs> like well, I don't care like that doesn't seem like a red flag to me or like other other things that that probably were red flags that I just ignore from just sheer naive ignorance and um being being young and and figuring that out and so he he was also a liar and a cheat and um I would say though I don't think it impacted the future well I don't know how it impacted future relationships I think it built my my tolerance to be less so but not to be a jealous person say like to not put up with so much shit (laughs) essentially is the best way to put it in that like I think I I can I pretty much every relationship that I've been in thereafter I'm pretty like 99.9 percent sure that nobody has cheated on me since then. So I kind of set like a higher standard for myself in that sense. Um, And I had a really great, great partner after that terrible relationship. So I think that helped restore my trust and faith in humanity and and men in general. So I'm thankful for that. But um, yeah, I, I guess it kind of depends. I'm like, if my friend or like let's say if my partner had a a a girl that was a friend that wanted us well one that person would be staying over with us together <laughs> so because we live together so that would be I'm trying to think of like a scenario that would make me me jealous in in a way that wasn't like intentional on his part but yeah I don't know but I can I can resonate with your experience because I've been there too well, I can think of um, a previous example from, from my life, which is um, I am extremely wary of one-on-one hangouts mm-hmm. at someone's house that involve alcohol, right? And that's mm-hmm. especially if it's a person that I have not met, right? Yeah. Because it's different when I've been able to see like sort of the interactions and the relationship and whatever else. And for me, like, that's like one of the the boundaries that I draw that I'm just like, I'm really not comfortable with that. And for the particular relationship that that piece is attached to, it was someone who couldn't necessarily make wise decisions in those circumstances. Right. Mm -hmm. And so whether or not that's fair to like apply universally um, is an entirely different discussion, but that's one of the things that I was able to like, okay, that makes me feel like, like this is a a dangerous situation potentially. Whereas something that's somewhat close, but not the same, like uh, a dinner, right? A dinner with a friend. Yeah. Totally fine. Um, Now I'm not saying that those are like the boundaries that everyone should draw, right. Or the things that are fair or whatever else, but that's, that's sort of um, how those pieces have come together. But there was a point in my life where I would have been like, no, I'm okay with this, but also just, I'm going to be like very frustrated and anxious the whole time. Mm. Whereas now that I'm able to draw those boundaries a little bit better, or at least, at least open up the conversation and communicate about it. Right. So that we can come to some sort of agreement together. I'm far less likely to feel sort of those have, you know, like jealousy crop up and overtake everything. It was most frequent when I was unable to even articulate sort of like where my boundaries were and then feel like they're being crossed over. Um, but I hadn't really set them. So in retrospect, it, it, some amount of the weight falls back on my shoulders. Mm, Yeah. I could see that. I'm just kind of putting myself in that situation. Like one, I can't, 
I don't generally like go over. I have plenty of guy friends just through various experiences, um, particularly when I was in like the dance scene. I you meet more male friends than female friends, but I have a ton of female friends too. And I'm like, I don't know if I would just go over to their house um, randomly just to hang out, but I would get like lunch or dinner um, with it. And I would run it by my partner. And I think most likely I'd invite my partner to join because I want him to be friends with my friends. But um, in that scenario, I guess it would not, I guess it wouldn't be a scenario I would probably most likely find myself in. Um, but lunch, dinner, yeah for sure. Hmm. Yeah. I'm curious what, what would you say to someone who was struggling with jealousy and maybe their, their barometer was a little higher than what would be deemed, you know, appropriate. Although that, I think that's a line everyone has to draw for themselves. Like how would you deal with feelings of, of jealousy? Yeah. So I think the thing that has worked best for me is the first line of defense is sort of that like opening up communication better right and it's sort of a red flag or a problem within your relationship if your partner is doing something that you're uncomfortable with and you guys can't find a compromise Mm -hmm. now that compromise might be you know like oh i don't like when you go out with your friends and it makes me feel jealous i need to work on that right like that it might be you have to own up to your emotions and sort of work on diffusing them and managing them better But it might be like you keep going into these situations that um, I don't think are fair or whatever else. Anyway, so if you can't sort of come to some sort of agreement about the sorts of things that you both feel okay are going into the relationship. Now, don't get me wrong. You can be jealous and you can start having thoughts like you should never go outside. You should only live with me. You should only like do these things that are really controlling and, and, and tightened up. And walking in that direction is not likely to win you any favors or do anything good for your relationship. So that is not, that is one way that people do try to deal with it. And one way that is not likely to work at all. Um, But if you, let's say um, you, you realize maybe some of those feelings or whatever are not fair given the situation or that your partner is not really, they're not really doing anything that they shouldn't be doing. If you're still sort of feeling those feelings Um, it's not super different from a lot of other emotions, but you need to come up with strategies for sort of, uh, like bailing out before the emotion gets too strong, right? Like if you start feeling jealousy, come up, have a set of strategies to sort of lower your emotional, um, uh, strength, right? Just the same as if you're getting too angry. (laughs) Yep. Things that you can do. Um, also having sort of a structure or framework in place around discussing these sorts of events after the fact, right? So if you've sort of come to this agreement, they're like, oh, this person can do this, but I'm going to feel jealous or whatever else. Having an outlet or some way to like, I I don't know if I want to say vent, but sort of discuss these feelings and sort of acknowledge them and work through them is really going to help too. Because I've known in, in my past, there were times that I would just deal with it, but I wasn't doing anything to sort of resolve it. I don't know if that makes sense, right? Like I would just- just withstand the feeling, (laughs) but I wasn't doing anything to sort of teach myself or my brain or rewire my emotions or help myself to go like, okay, see, that was okay. Like nothing bad happened or, or whatever else. So those are some of the the main things that have been useful for me in my journey. Hmm. Yeah. That that seems very productive. And I think one thing I want to add to that is, um, I think the communication is always key, but also adding some like compassion and empathy for like both parties. You know, I actually just read the story of this woman who just ended her engagement because she finally realized after four years that her, her fiance was super controlling, would never let her see her family or friends. Actually, she had to like quit two of her friends and just like, so she, all she could do is like go to school, work, and then come home and be with him. And that's not every, anything outside of that, that seems very unhealthy, um, for both ends. Um, but like, you know, if, if that person, if that guy was like, you know, I'm, I'm really nervous when you're, you're hanging out with friends because you could do, be doing something like this. If, if she reacted to some extent, like, well, you're ridiculous, you're stupid. That's stupid to think of 
that that's probably not helpful or productive to be like, okay, I, I get that you're, you're feeling nervous when I'm hanging out. And, you know, I want to assure you that I'm in this and I, 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 it's important to me that I spend time outside of this relationship for both of our well being. And I, you know, I want you to trust that, that this relationship is, you know, important to me, if that's the case, like in a soothing, comforting way versus like, you're stupid versus like on the other side, um, I'm trying to think from like someone who was being controlled by someone who's being controlling to be like ha- having the, the compassion for that person that's, that's feeling the need to control because they're jealous, but, you know, also having that personal boundary for themselves to realize, you know, what's, what's worth, you know, sticking out and what's, what, when is it time to, to leave? Because if it doesn't change at all, like if you could never go out with your friends ever, that that's something to kind of like pay attention to. That's what I fear. I think both you and I, Donovan would probably agree that, and I think we've talked about this in previous episodes, that it's important to not have like a single individual, your romantic partner, be your everything for, for you. Like you need a life outside of your relationship too. Like go, go out with your friends, girls, guys, I don't know, meet, see your family. I think that's important for any relationship. Yeah, absolutely. Like just to echo that, if, if you only have the one relationship in your life, it's just not a very strong position to be a person from, because if that, if that relationship faces struggle, which it is likely to, and all relationships are likely to, to some degree at certain points, the more resources you have to sort of bolster yourself up, the better off you're going to be. And it also takes off some of the pressure from the relationship. When you just have that one connection to sort of try to do everything in your life, it's, Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's basically not realistic, right. For anyone to be able to fulfill every social need that you might have. So definitely the more people that you are able to rely on and sort of go back to the easier things will be for you and your partner. Um, on a related note, I want to ask if you, have you ever been in a relationship with someone who was very jealous? Like the other person was, was jealous all the time. Hmm. If I was, I don't know if they made it, um, super apparent or maybe they didn't communicate it. I could possibly see some incidences because, you know, back in, although I haven't really done it in a while, but you know, in my, in my twenties, especially my early twenties, I did a lot of partner, partner dancing, swing dancing, and also blues dancing, which can be more intimate (laughs) kind of a dance. But I know for me, I'm not like trying to sleep with all these guys that I'm dancing with. I, I know that this is just for fun. There's a healthy, we're just friends, friendly boundary, even though it might look like there's something going on to an outsider who's not a dancer. So, um, I think, I try to be like conscious of it. I try not to do like anything crazy <laughs> or anything like in their presence. And I guess I, I try to explain, you know, and I usually introduce, you know, any, any of my guy dance friends to my partner. So they, they feel like more comfortable and like they can be friends and they can see that it's not like they're trying to get with me or anything or steal me away from him or anything like that. Um, but I can't recall an incident where it was just like so extreme that it made me walk away. <laughs> I don't, I don't recall an incident um, to that extent. But I, I have always had guy friends, and you know, for the most part that I can recall, that my my significant other has been okay with me having guy friends because if they weren't okay with it, then I don't think I'd be in that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have been in that situation but not not for any period of time right it was a very short-lived thing because of how bad it was I'm sure but that doesn't sound great um and just to preface this i think one of the reasons it's useful to sort of talk about is because if you're feeling a lot of jealousy and stuff this is the way not to handle it because this is the stuff that implodes relationships um just at the speed of light so I have been in, yeah, I had one relationship where the girl, you know, after we had gone on a couple dates or whatever else, started getting really, really jealous and needy all the time. So 
they were kind of fused together and I don't think that's super uncommon, right? It's like um, neediness with the root of jealousy and you use the neediness to sort of block out or try to make like that person spend all their time with you or all their attention or whatever else. But the nonstop barrage of just sort of like, where are you? What are you doing? Who are you with? Who is that? How do you, I don't know, I guess, how do you know that person is maybe not that much of a question, but in the context of everything else, yeah. it's annoying. Right. Yeah. Um, and just sort of this like constant stream of, of check-ins and, and basically paranoia, right? Mm. Um, it gets draining so fast. So the reason I bring it up is on the flip side, you know, if you're feeling these feelings, channeling them into a conversation around the feelings that you're feeling as opposed to this laundry list of like, what are you doing? Who are you with? Who is that? What is that person? Like, why are you spending time with them? Why, you know, if, if that person had been able to have a conversation with me more around, like, I'm feeling these feelings strongly and like, I need to figure out how to manage them as opposed to skipping a step and just going to like, I'm feeling jealous. So what are you doing? And what are you going to change? You, <laughs> yeah. you must be talking to all these other people and you must have all these other intentions and like just this list of accusations and whatnot. Mm. Um, that's obviously not going to serve you. And I think that's probably the most common thing you see, right? When people are mm-hmm. feeling jealous or whatever, they start yeah. saying like, oh, you had these intentions. Oh, you're going to do this. Oh, whatever else. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe the the situation is different if it's an ongoing relationship or something in the past has actually happened right? Like there's a little bit more nuance of a discussion to be had there, but obviously the most common interaction I've seen or experienced is with no history, with nothing going on. And just this list of accusations, it just, it's so unpleasant to be on the other side of those things. And (laughs) I will also say, having been on both sides, like those questions aren't going to give you, like, even if you were right, which you're probably not, you're still not going to get the the answer from that. Right. Nobody, it's it's, it's not like anybody's ever been like, Oh, like you're cheating on me. And the other person's like, Oh yeah, I am. Okay. Got me. Um, I mean, I'm sure that has happened, but that's not the typical case. But even if they are cheating on you, wouldn't it be better for you to know? Um, and then be like, have enough willpower to like walk away from that relationship. (laughs) Oh no. Yeah. That's sure. Yeah. But like the badgering and and the constant questions and the accusations and all that stuff, like it is not going to get you where you want to be regardless of the situation. If anything, it's just going to negatively impact the relationship. Now, again, it's easier said than done because a lot of times these emotions run high and then um, you just end up doing stuff that you're not especially proud of later. Um, And this is something we've talked about multiple times. We'll probably talk about it multiple more times. The difference between like how we actually end up acting when emotions are high mm-hmm. as opposed to how we would like to act when emotions are high. <laughs> yeah, Every different. But I will say for me, the more that I, you know, talk about it, think about it, explore this stuff, the more likely I am to catch myself right. um, before these instances sort of escalate into behavior that I don't want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think it would require that person to develop enough self-awareness to realize, Oh, my emotions are high. I might say or do something that might be hurtful for the relationship and to like take a breath, self-soothe, calm yourself down before you kind of have that more productive conversation. Because, you know, at the source of it, it can be really detrimental to a relationship because it's basically saying, I don't trust you. You're, you must be screwing it around. And it also goes back to like an, another, I mean, we've <laughs> referenced a lot of past episodes, but I think it's also important to reiterate um, the idea of like making assumptions and creating stories in your head. Cause that, that is a slippery slope. And, you know, a person might've just smiled at a stranger. And then, you know, that story creating of like, Ooh, that person wants to hook up with that person. That person wants to like, get with them he's wanting to leave me he's gonna cheat like that it's a little extreme and so you gotta like rein yourself in a little bit and just be like the fact of the matter is like all he did was just smile at this girl it meant like and that's all I know I can't assume that he's trying to hook up with this person because he smiled at someone (laughs) yeah so before we uh close it out there's another huge sort of 
piece that I wanted to open up, which is we've been talking about jealousy primarily almost exclusively in terms of relationships. But I'd be curious what your thoughts and experiences are around jealousy in other forms. And I can give you sort of a primer. Like sometimes I will see people who are the same age, for example, mm-hmm. who are infinitely more successful. Mm-hmm. And that absolutely like sets off some of the jealousy alarms. So uh, I have other stuff that I could say about it, but I'm, I'm curious your thoughts and experiences in, in the realm of jealousy outside of relationships. Yeah. I actually thought of just two examples earlier. I I was thinking of this. I was like, you know, who's, who's really jealous in my life? My dogs, (laughs) because we've, I've been dog sitting, um, random dogs here and there. And my little one, he, he's very independent. He likes to play chase and run away from me. Now he used to be so needy. And now he's like, Oh, I get freedom. I'll, I'll run away. Um, and he never listens to the command come ever. <laughs> He's just was like, oh, that means just run away from you, right? And so I had this other dog in the yard with us. And he finally, he knew the word come this whole time. He finally started listening when there was another dog present, but he refuses to listen if there's no other dog. So I'm just like, yeah, it happens beyond just humans. It happens with dogs too, <laughs> because I'm, I'm their person. But the other scenario, like a a more serious scenario than dogs would be um, actually recently because I had just shared my my miscarriage story. You know, I don't know when that episode gets released, but it'll be before this episode gets released. But, you know, before I don't think I had the experience of the jealousy. And when I like see a kid and a family just walking down the road or or, you know, there's a someone that's celebrating they're they're about to have a baby and they posted their ultrasound on Facebook. I would say there, there is a hint of jealousy because it's like bringing back the pain and the hurt of me losing my own and not being able to fulfill on that, that dream um, and not having like the thing that I want and they get to have it and they didn't have to deal. Well, I don't know. Maybe they did have a miscarriage and I had no idea, but it's like, it, it went from like, oh, yay, so happy for you from like, don't put that in my face. <laughs> it's like, I can't deal with that <laughs> kind of a thing. And it, it, it's, it, it changes you in that sense. So that's another example, I'd say. Yeah, I just wanted to pick up on, on one of the pieces that you mentioned that has helped me with sort of these other kinds of jealousy at times, which is you mentioned that like, uh, you know, they didn't have to go through this. Well, well maybe they did. I really don't know. And that's one piece that's helped me at least is to see sort of um, when other people are more successful or have gone on a vacation or whatever else that I'm jealous of realizing that I'm literally just seeing a tiny, tiny snapshot Mm -hmm. of their life and have no clue what they had to overcome or didn't have to overcome or have faced or not faced or anything about their story or anything that they've done. Um, You know, because if I think about from like the, business success side of things or productive side of things or whatever. I can look through back through my history and say like, yeah, there was times that I was really working as hard as I could. Mm -hmm. There's other times that I wasn't. And there's like reasons that I was and reasons I wasn't and whatever else. And, you know, when I look at this other person's life and their trajectory and how they got to where they were and every single little part of that and what it's like to actually be them Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I just really have no idea. Right. Like I really have no clue what it's like to be someone else. And you know, I can see the difference in actions sometimes, right? Like, oh, that person worked harder than me or like, or even a more objective measure, which is like, they wrote more pages of words than I did, Mm -hmm. but I can never know like how hard or easy that was for them internally, right? Like for me, I, I know from when I wrote my book, like there was tons and tons of times that it was just so difficult and painful. And I don't know And for anyone else who has written a book. Like, I don't know if, 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 they had the same amount of times, if it was harder, if it was easier, if it was whatever else. Anyway, this is getting long winded, but the whole point of it is when I start exploring those sorts of ideas that has helped me sort of dissolve some of my jealousy a bit, Mm -hmm. because that initial feeling for me, at least is often tied to like, Oh, well, I worked hard and I don't have this thing. Like this sucks. I wanted this and, and they have it. So that doesn't seem fair. And Um, another piece to build on top of this is another thing that I've found really helpful for jealousy in that realm is spending as little time as I can on it and looking for what I can do that's useful. So 
when I was younger, I used to have impulses around like, oh, that person's more successful than me. Well, they probably didn't work for it. They probably just got to hand it to them, blah, 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 whatever. Sort of this like tear down method of trying to get on the same level. Mm -hmm. And as I've gotten older and more mature, I find myself more and more going like, oh, wow. Like, you know, this person is five years younger than me. They have, uh, I don't know, 10 times the net worth. What are they doing? What is the difference in their story? and, And what can I actually pick up to get there. If I even want to get there, that's another thing that I've had to learn is a lot of times the stuff I'm jealous of when I look at the actual details of what it takes to, to get that thing. So for example, there were times that I was jealous of like professional athletes. And then I, (laughs) now that I'm older, I'm like the actual schedule and life you have to live to do that doesn't seem (laughs) like I don't have enough passion around any particular sport to do that. Like I want to stay in shape and be fit and healthy and whatnot, but I don't have enough passion to like lean into that life and build it for myself. Right. Anyway, I've been talking a lot, but <laughs> apparently I have much stronger and better developed tools for dealing with jealousy outside of relationships than I do for inside relationships. No, I think that's a, a really good point that you brought up. And I think just like taking a step back and realizing, again, don't make assumptions. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know what they had to do to get where they are for one. Um, but the other scenario that I think I just made me think of what has helped me in a situation when my brother told me he was going to propose to his girlfriend, this was several years ago. And I had just broken up with my last relationship of four years. And I like, I wanted to be, I so wanted to be happy for him, but I like burst into tears because I was just feeling sorry for myself. And I don't know if it was like jealousy, but you know, what helped me after getting some coaching from a friend was to realize that, you know, I mean, I wouldn't want to have married that person if they were were not on the same page with me. I don't want to be married. I'm like exactly where I need to be right now. And so I think the other component I wanted to add to that was to, to recognize like, hey, you are where you are right now. And this is exactly where you need to be. And this is where you grow from, you know, not anyone like I, like I'm in CrossFit too. And there's women that can like bench press insane insane amount, way more than me, but I'm not jealous because it's like, okay, they've been doing it for five years or 10 years. And I've only been doing it for like three. So obviously that makes more sense. It's like, yeah, they've been doing it at this for much longer. And so I think that's, that's another piece I wanted to add. Yeah. Since you mentioned that it actually made me think that a lot of times, at least for me, when I'm jealous, yeah, what I'm looking at is, is like some sort of goal or milestone. Mm-hmm. And it's way less often that I'm jealous of someone's actual like journey or process. <laughs> so it's just kind of interesting like when you're mentioning you know sort of the the weight targets or whatever um you know being jealous around like oh this person can i don't know bench twice as much as me or squat twice as much as me or whatever else but i've never i've I've never i don't think i've ever been jealous around like oh this person gets up and works their their ass off and have for the last you know 10 years (laughs) doing this never skipped a day only eating like you know, super clean rice and chicken. Like yeah. I've never been jealous of any of the process pieces, right. which is interesting. I'm just bringing it up now. Cause it's, it's completely new to me. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's, that's a really good point. And it's like, it goes back, you know, circling it back around to like, you have no idea what they had to do to get to where they are. now. So, and if you had to go through the same thing, um, maybe, maybe you wouldn't have the, maybe you'd appreciate like where you're at more right now. Versus it's like, maybe I don't even want to get there. Maybe I don't want to bench press my whole body weight. I'm okay. (laughs) Or or twice my body weight or whatever it is. Like, like me, that would be like me wanting to lift as much as my, my coach. That's absurd. He, he, he can like lift three of me (laughs) kind of thing. That that would be doing this a lot longer and he's has way more training and I don't want to do that. (laughs) Honestly, I like where I am now. So, yeah. Yeah. So one last piece that I just thought of, which is, okay, now we were talking about feeling jealous around stuff that mostly has to do with process and intention. I'm curious if you have any thoughts on stuff that has to do with luck. Like, Hey, my friend just won the lottery. Like he didn't, he didn't do anything. I mean, that's not true. I wish I had a friend that won the lottery, but (laughs) I don't know anyone that's won the lottery. Mm. I mean, I guess 
you know, I, I realize that luck, maybe some people seem more lucky than others. And I think it's your outlook in life. Cause you know, there's like, yeah, maybe you place your bets on, on a certain stock or a certain horse and that one performs, but it doesn't mean it's like, you're going to be lucky a hundred percent of the time. You just got lucky like once, maybe twice and, and cool for you. But it's just like, even though those people that have the luck, it, it's not like they're endlessly lucky. <laughs> and so that kind of pulls me back because I have some luck sometimes once in a while. I'm like, oh yeah, I picked a good one. Yeah, I don't expect this to be the case every single time. So it's just like, okay, sometimes people are lucky, some people are not. And we have to realize that all humans are not 100% lucky all the time. That would be really weird and very very sketchy honestly <laughs> if it if it was if they seemed lucky all the time yeah <laughs> yeah I think I probably land somewhere similar which is going back to this idea that I keep repeating like what's useful out of a situation or feeling or thought right what's useful and you know if you can dig in and sort of figure out what parts are purely luck and what parts are part of the process then maybe there's something to get there but if it is genuinely something that is hundred percent luck. And I have sort of a, a, a negative example of this, which is um, a friend of a friend actually passed away in a complete freak car accident. Like uh, I didn't get the full details, but you know, something like with a truck carrying something f- flew out like through the windshield um, and whatever else. And obviously that's, that's extremely unlucky. I'm not jealous of that at all, yeah. but it's, it's the same sort of, um, experience in the sense that if I look at that and go, what, what can I learn from this? Mm-hmm. Um, and if it was the opposite case where it's like the, the, my friend won the lottery or whatever, like, what can I learn from this? There's nothing really there. There's nothing really useful to take from the experience. So for me, um, that helps me move through some of the, the, the jealousy pieces, right. When I'm able to see like, okay, this person just got lucky. Like yeah. <laughs> there's nothing really to be done here. And I think it also goes into like, if you always focus on the unlucky moments and make that your whole thing, it can really bring you down as well. I was just thinking of, you know, sometimes my flights are delayed. And one time I had to stay in Denver, Colorado overnight because they, there was like an emergency like landing. And then there was like the pilots were overworked. And so they couldn't fly us out that day. And I had to miss work the next day. And I was like, this is so unlucky, but I wouldn't say I'm so unlucky all the time because if I was like, oh, I'm just this unlucky person and you define that and then you're just kind of bitter um, and you don't recognize that, hey, actually the majority of my flights are on time (laughs) or or at least no long, no more delayed than like 30 minutes. So it's not that big of a deal, but that's what I, that's where I want to end things, (laughs) I guess, yeah. All right. Uh, Yeah, I think we covered this topic pretty well. If you have some thoughts about jealousy and if you've experienced it or someone was jealous of you, feel free to share that in the comments and like, subscribe, follow all the things that help spread the happiness in the world. Uh, We appreciate you and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy this video, be sure to like it and then go and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you get notified when the next video comes out. If you check out in the description below, go to my website where you can get my free fast and easy guide to stress relief. Thanks again for checking us out and we'll see you next time.